What's going on, everybody? A little bit of a different type of video for once. We have two all stars out there. One, Ryan Leaf. The other, Johnny Manziel. Johnny Manziel just recently had a documentary. It's out on Netflix, I believe. Um, I'm pretty sure it was Netflix. Really a good documentary. If you watch it, you get to learn a lot onto it with his adventures through everything. Um, a lot of behind the scenes stuff. It talks about the drugs, the alcohol, the autograph signings, suicide, you name it. It's all covered onto it. Ryan Leaf, on the other hand, I don't think ever had a documentary. If I'm wrong, somebody just throw me a link down in the, uh, comment section. I'll take a look at it. So today, we're talking about two quarterbacks who were supposed to be, like, number ones overall. As everybody knows, Manziel dropped to 22, I believe. I want to say the Browns traded up from 26 to 22 to get him. And good old Ryan Leaf was supposed to be the next big thing. I know, I know. A lot of people are going to say I should have Andrew Luck up here. Andrew Luck's a little bit different story. He actually did very well, in my opinion, playing football. It's just it took one too many hits, guys. Um, talk about this a lot. I'm, I even throw it out. Uh, if you guys know me and talk to me personally, I say it all the time. I'm like, Mahomes is like one hit away from being either Aikman or Luck out there, you know. But I'm curious here. Out of the two, with all the hype, not saying you went out there and spent a ton in sports cards. And trust me, there's people that did in both that are that old, my age. 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. You know, spent a lot of money. Which one do you think was the biggest disappointment between the two with the careers? Ryan Leaf, Johnny Manziel. Um, I'm going to pull this up over here. We'll hit Ryan Leaf first here. Now, granted, Ryan Leaf is a year older. Maybe he was born in 76. He did play in the NFL. He had it for the Chargers and the Cowboys between 98 and 2001. Played for the Bucks and the... Seahawks, too, which I don't remember. To be honest, I don't remember that. College was Washington State Cougars. He was the finalist for the Heisman, junior year. First Manziel, winning in his freshman year, which was like a complete shock to everybody across the board onto that one, if I remember right. Uh, Leaf was the second overall pick by San Diego. Manziel, of course, went trip down to 22. A lot of that was due to his troubles that a lot of people didn't want to push to. Uh, if you guys remember during Dallas's pick, like Dallas wanted Manziel. And I think I think they picked a tight end during that draft. I just remember them booing like no other. I was like, wow, craziness. But I'm going to try to pull up some stats here real quick. Um, College-wise, three years for uh, Ryan Leaf. He had 59 touchdowns, 24 interceptions, 141. Wow, 141 rating. I wasn't ready to say that one, was I? Let's see if it has. Okay, NFL stats, 98-2001. Played the total of 21 games that he started in, 25 total games played. Overall record, 4-17. and he had 14 touchdowns, 36 interceptions, a QB rating of a 50 even. So, you know, there was a lot of hype for this guy. And even afterwards, you know, there was some stuff that went on after football. You guys can look into that. He had some legal troubles. I want to say, I want to say it was 09, something like that. Yeah, 09 for... Um, Burglary and controlled substance charges. 2012, he was arrested in bur burglary, theft, and drug charges in his hometown, Montana. 2012, authorities issued two arrest warrants for him and set bond at 126000 And then June 2012, Leaf was sentenced to seven years in custody of Montana Department of Corrections with two years suspended if he abided by the conditions imposed by the uh, district judge. A lot more to all that. Uh, 14, he left in car. He, Leaf was in car. Yeah, incarcerated. Sorry. Um, in Montana. So he got five years of prison in September 2014. And then May, last thing they have, May 2020, Leaf was arrested for misdemeanor domestic battery in California. 
So just looking at the overall stats, you know, Lee Swipball was supposed to be the next um, hyped up person out there. Now gone. See what happened afterwards. Johnny Football. Yes. Everybody remembers Johnny Football. I still think there's a lot of uh, credit needs to be given to him because of how he went about a lot of this. A lot of people made a lot of money off of Johnny Manziel. They talk about in the video with all the jerseys and all that stuff. You know, guy doesn't see a dime. He starts doing some uh, shady autograph signings, makes all this money, does all this travel. Uh, they talk about how they started the rumor. His parents were like wealthy oil people and all that. Tell me, if you guys got some time, watch it. It's really, really good in depth onto it with some of this stuff onto it. And even them admitting that they did some of this stuff. It's, it's insane. All right, so everybody knows Manziel, if you watch the stuff, Texas A&M quarterback um, was supposed to be, you know, the next great thing. He slipped down to, I think it was 22 in a draft. I can't find anything real quick. It's just pulling up. I'm pretty sure it was 22. Uh, let's see here. Oh, that's high school. I'm trying to find his stats here. Okay, two years. He had 63 touchdowns, 22 interceptions, 164 passer rating. Uh, football career. Here we go. Cleveland Browns, 2014-15. Talks about all that stuff, negotiations. Um, there we go. So, NFL career. Seven touchdowns, seven interceptions, 74.4. You had some time in the CFL, which was in 2018 between, I want to say it was Hamilton and Montreal. I can't remember the two teams. And then you had the AAF, which was, um, he played in 2019. And then FCF career stats, which was 2021-2022, uh, where he had three touchdowns, no interceptions during that time frame. Oh, Pretty much all we got there. A lot of honors in college. A lot when you look through it all. A lot of controversies. It talks about the arrests and stuff like that during his college parties on to here. Uh, a lot of good read. I'm not going to go through it all. You guys, if you watch the movie, you pretty much, or the documentary, you pretty much see all that stuff on to it. So, like I said, my question I want to see in the comments which one do you think was the bigger of the two disappointments for, like, NFL expectations where everybody was, you know, pushing, he's going to be the next greatest thing, next Broadway Joe, next Montana, next Elway, whoever it may be out there, you know, that they were being compared to at the times, that these guys could sling the ball, they're going to lead, they're going to win championships, all that. Fortunately, people dumped money, and luckily back then wasn't a whole lot. Could you imagine now, like, if, Johnny Football came out during the great hype. In the like NT rookies are selling it, uh, you know, 150, 200,000. Now they're like 50 bucks, 100 bucks. Some people are just buying them just to have because of the documentary and stuff like that. But I want to see what everybody has to say. What do you guys think between the two? You know, I know some people are going to say Andrew Luck on it. There'll probably be some other names. You guys could throw them out there in the comments and everything on to it. But something I've been talking about for a while when we used to do some of the overtimes and stuff about some of the big hype players to where they just never made it. And these two really stick out the most during, you know, my tenure in the hobby. Ryan Leaf, of course, being first. And then Johnny Football being uh, number two onto it. All right, guys. Appreciate y'all watching the video. I'm out. Catch you next one.